Hello and welcome to this week's edition of Checks and Balances TV. I'm your host, Matthew J. Reddick, and I'm committed to giving you the truth you need to financially succeed. Each week, we'll review the news, check the facts, and provide balanced insight and unbiased advice to help you make critical financial decisions. So let's get up, get energized, and get going, and see how today's headlines impact your financial future. The final numbers for holiday retail spending are trickling in, and for many retailers, it was a very merry holiday. Online shopping hit a record $32.6 billion from November 1st through the end of December, which was a higher total than projected. While the total retail numbers aren't officially out yet, the National Retail Federation announced an increase to its projection for total holiday spending of $451 billion, up 3.3% from 2009 due to a very robust November. The good news for consumers is that even though spending was up, the Federal Reserve just announced that November marks the 27th month in a row that revolving consumer debt has declined. As for credit card companies and banks, a new year brings with it new fees for consumers. Thanks to the Card Accountability, Responsibility and Disclosure Act, also known as the Card Act, and some new Federal Reserve regulations, credit card companies have new rules and procedures to follow when it comes to consumer credit cards, all of which are costing them and eventually you money. Banks are now looking for new ways to ramp up revenue this year. Just as those holiday credit card statements start rolling in, so will potentially new fees. And if you think you're exempt to an increase in fees because you're a debit card user, think again. Okay, so what's really going on here? Let's check the facts using our checks and balances process. Internet retailers, or e-tailers, saw a number of records broken this past holiday season. The total amount spent online during the months of November and December was 12% higher than in 2009. The Monday after Thanksgiving, better known as Cyber Monday, was the first day ever to break the $1 billion mark in online sales. While the National Retail Federation has not yet released the official numbers for total holiday sales, they believe it should come in around $451 billion, which would be the greatest one-year increase since 2006 and just under the record high of $452.8 billion in 2007. Many are calling 2010 the best holiday shopping season since 2006 and believe the economic recovery in consumer spending is well underway. However, the unemployment rate in November of 2006 was 4.5%, compared to 9.8% in 2010. Revolving consumer debt in 2006 was at $871 billion. Two years later, it totaled $957 billion in 2008. Spending has been on the rise. But this brings up an important question. With increased holiday retail spending and more than double the rate of unemployment, how is it that consumer debt is still on its way down? Well, part of the reason is consumer debt charge-offs by many banks. Lower revolving debt can be largely traced to these bank charge-offs, which occur when consumer declares bankruptcy and when credit card debt is more than 180 days past due. At the end of the third quarter in 2009, consumer revolving debt was $893 billion, compared to the third quarter of 2010 of $806 billion, suggesting that consumers paid down $87 billion of debt in a one-year period. What you don't hear is that banks charged off approximately $80 billion in consumers' debt last year. The truth is that consumer debt dropped only about $7 billion in 2010 due to consumers paying down their own debts. As you can imagine, credit card companies are looking for new ways to make money this year. With high consumer charge-offs, combined with new federal rules and regulations, credit card companies and banks now stand to lose a significant portion of their previously profitable revenue stream. Financial institutions are expected to introduce more new fees in 2011. As an example, credit card account holders have been hit with inactivity fees for not running up their balances, and foreign exchange fees when using their credit card to make non-U.S. dollar purchases. Checking accounts are getting hit with new monthly maintenance fees, and minimum requirements are becoming much more difficult to meet. And listen to this one. 
J.P. Morgan Chase Bank, which in 2008 acquired Washington Mutual and all of their free checking accounts, will be adding fees back to these previously free checking accounts starting in 2011. Bank executives, however, point out that fees can be waived by meeting certain requirements, such as direct depositing at least $500 or more into a customer's account each month. Another checking account offered by Commerce Bank says that account holders can eliminate fees on their account if they avoid any paper-based transactions. On a checking account that uses paper checks? <laughs> really? My oh my. Increased fees for using ATM machines are also being considered, as well as fees if you don't use an ATM machine. There may be fees if you forego the online banking at the institution you bank with and opt to see a real person. In addition, many banks are strongly considering adding annual fees to debit cards, limiting the number of transactions a debit card holder can make each month, and also limiting the size of any purchase a consumer can make with their debit card. Strange as all of this sounds, it's true. Okay, so you may be asking yourself, Matt, what does all this mean to me? Well, now that we've checked the facts, let's balance this news using our checks and balances process to determine what action you should take today. The recent message that consumers have been paying down existing revolving debt balances couldn't be further from the truth. From the second quarter to the third quarter of 2010, credit card debt did decrease by about $10 billion, according to the official report by the Federal Reserve. Yet they do not report how this happened. The inside story is that banks charged off approximately $16.7 billion in the third quarter of 2010, meaning that customers actually charged another $6.7 billion in new credit card debt that quarter. It's eye-opening when you really check the facts. Many consumers are merely unloading debt rather than paying it off. And while banks may not be happy with the large number of charge-offs, the retail sector is very happy about consumer spending. Black Friday is a term used by retailers as the first day of the year that they come out of the red financially and into the black. 2010's Black Friday certainly lived up to its name. We've all heard the phrase creative accounting. Well, what many banks are engaged in today is creative nickel and diming. It's costing you money just to have your money in their institution. While increased consumer protection for credit cards has created positive consumer awareness about the potential problems and pitfalls of a credit card, the newest hurdle of exorbitant bank fees does very little for consumer confidence in most financial institutions. While credit cards are still largely elective, banking at local banks is not. In a common sense world, there would be a premium to access things you didn't have but want. However, being charged to gain access to your own money is just not right. Okay, so what's the bottom line here? While media reports may have brought optimism and renewed confidence to many, news such as pre-recession spending levels should not be considered a free ticket to rack up more credit card debt. You can't continue to do the same thing and expect a different result, which is commonly referred to as the definition of insanity. As for the banking industry and other fee-charging financial institutions, buyer beware. While the bank places much of the blame on new banking regulations, most of the blame is theirs to claim. The bottom line here is the customer should always be treated fairly, regardless of how much profit the bank's board of directors wants to earn each year. Hold your bank accountable. Ask to speak to the manager and negotiate better rates or a reduction of fees. If they balk, shop around for a new customer-friendly bank. In this week's CBTV poll, we asked Americans an important question. How did you pay for your gifts this holiday season? The options were A, by credit card, B, debit card, C, cash, D, by check, and E, I didn't buy gifts this holiday season. Well, 54% of you said you paid for your holiday purchases this year with a credit card. Well, be sure to pay those balances off as soon as possible, and at the very least, make more than the minimum payment each month. Because if you don't, you might still be paying for those gifts come next holiday season. In our On the Street segment, we travel the country to ask Americans what they think about an important financial topic or issue. For this week's segment, we ask people their opinion about personal debt and how to keep it as low as possible. 
Let's take a look at what America had to say. I want to talk to you about uh, debt in America today. It seems that many Americans are buried in debt from mortgages to auto loans to credit cards. What's, what's your opinion about personal debt today? They live above their standard of living what they should be. They live way above their means. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Many Americans today are drowning in debt. They have a big mortgage, they have a car loan, they have credit cards. What, what, what is your uh, opinion or position on, on debt, personal debt? <clears throat> I think the issue with personal debt is it's become acceptable to society so much now that people don't actually realize that the level of debt that they're in is, is extraordinary. So 20, 30, 40 years ago, people had a small mortgage and maybe a small loan that was managed by a personal bank manager. Whereas now where everything is done online, there's less face-to-face -face representation with your bank. People don't actually realize what they're getting themselves into. So if you were to uh, talk to a group of uh, you know 30-year-olds, what would you? What advice would you give them in uh, as far as how to handle money and stay out of debt? Uh, probably the biggest piece of advice I'd give is for them to start looking now to pull money out of their check and put it in some kind of 401k or deferred comp plan. Um, even just as little as thirty dollars a month. I mean, it adds up over a period of time. Uh, the second advice I'd give them is get rid of the credit cards. You know, see the light. You know, if you're if you carry multiple credit cards, you know, pay them off. Get it down to one credit card. I mean, when you actually think about it, if you're paying 28, 30 percent on five credit cards, that's a lot of money. And live within your means. You know, live. Probably the the best thing for people to realize is that life gets better when you get older. And if you live within your means now, when you get older, then you can afford to do the things you want to do and don't have to worry about debt. Those were some great words of wisdom to live by, weren't they? And you know what? It's never too late to start. And now for Matt's weekly tip, tool, or technique. Monitor and maintain your credit report. Be sure to check your credit report often. You have the right to request a free copy of your credit report from each of the three major credit reporting agencies once every 12 months. Be sure to examine it closely and dispute any inaccuracies. Because of the tight lending environment today, it's more important than ever to have a good credit score, especially if you ever want to obtain a loan, mortgage, or any other credit need. Even if you aren't applying for new credit, maintaining a good credit score can help you avoid paying more for things like rent in an apartment, hooking up utilities, or even signing up for mobile phone service. So here are four easy steps for maintaining a good credit report. Step number one. Check your credit report once per year from the three major credit reporting agencies, which are Experian, Equifax, and TransUnion. Step two, pay all of your bills on time. This includes utilities, credit cards, car payments, mortgages, and anything else you owe. You see, if you're delinquent, your missed payment will end up on your credit report and can stay there for years to come. Step number three, keep your credit card balances low compared to your credit limit. If you have high debt now, work hard to pay down that debt every month. And step number four, only use credit when it's absolutely necessary. And no, Christmas shopping does not constitute a necessity. Now is the time to realize that neither banks nor the credit card companies are responsible for getting you out of debt. Yes, you are. But you have to do your part. Check your credit report annually. Pay all of your bills on time and use credit wisely. Even if it's free and available, use it wisely. Financial freedom doesn't come easy, but it's certainly well worth the extra effort to get there. Mark your calendars for the next installment of our Truth About series. This upcoming episode will air later this month and is on the Truth About Mutual Funds. You will learn the pros and cons, both sides of the coin, and this important financial product so you'll know if it's the right investment for you. And be sure to friend our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel to gain exclusive access to our library of viral videos and the lighter side of finance. For more information on how to become a Checks and Balances Savvy Consumer and to download any of our free reports, visit the download section of our website. Also, be sure to get your copy of The 10 Simple Steps to Financial Freedom, a free report that gives you 10 easy steps to spending less, saving more, and becoming truly financially free in the future. And while you're on the site, remember, your voice counts. Be sure to take this week's poll and visit our Tell Us What You Think section to share your opinion. Make your voice heard. 
And finally, remember that only you can control your financial future. You can succeed. You just need confidence and determination. I'm Matthew J. Reddick from Checks and Balances TV. Be sure to join us next week when we'll discuss a new year, new Congress, new laws, and you. Until then, spend less, save more, believe in yourself, and make it happen.